All right, everybody, I wanted to take a quick moment just to kind of go over where we're going and uh, why we're going there. I'm not going to talk about the links. You can uh, take basically pause the video if you want to see the links to these pages I'm going over. So the U.S. government's official name for Area 51 is the Nevada Test and Training Range. Today, it is used as an open training range for the U.S. Air Force, presumably to test secret new aircraft technologies. It's restricted to the public and has armed guards patrolling the perimeter. It's also impossible to enter the airspace above without permission from air traffic control. Area 51 has long been a topic of fascination for conspiracy theorists and paranormal enthusiasts who believe it to be the location where the U.S. government stores and hides alien bodies and UFOs. If this was true, Area 51 is the most likely place for it due to its extremely remote location and extreme security. So if you can't see it except on Google Earth, is there anywhere you can see it in person? There is only one place to see Area 51 in person, and that is on Tickaboo Peak. So Tickaboo Peak in Alamo, Nevada uh, is about as close as you can legally get to the base. And you can see here in this picture, if you were to zoom in, this is what you would see. You basically just see there's something there, but you can't really make it out. Um, Google Earth satellite view really is, is the best place to, to see uh, Area 51. So, but it, those who want to see it in person, uh, here's how to get there. Basically from Las Vegas, you head up north I-15 and then you take I-93 about an hour and a half total to Alamo, Nevada. Now in Alamo, it's got a pretty decent gas station and store there. It's actually a really huge, huge store for a convenience store. So it's best to load up on fuel and provisions there. From Alamo, Nevada, you basically go backtrack from the store down to the trailhead down 93. And then from this point, it's dirt. It's in the uh, Parang... Parang I'm not going to pronounce that National Wildlife Refuge Headquarters. Anyway, with this section here is dirt. This is kind of a narrow pass. It's really rocky and uh, you technically need four-wheel drive to get through. After that, it's smooth sailing kind of along straight away, um, 24 miles total to the trailhead. Now, if you zoom in a little bit to uh, where it says the, the Tickaboo Peak trailhead is, what I found in the video is the trailhead is actually closer here. Then you've got to climb up this mountain, um, come across here, climb a few more mountains to get to Tickaboo Peak. Now, once you're on Tickaboo Peak, there's a few things uh, notable that you could see, um, such as the Medlin Ranch, which is right out here. Now, I saw this as a some kind of a compound facility. You can Google Medlin Ranch. I did put a little link in the video if you want to see what it is. Basically, it's uh, a ranch that was around before Area 51, and they've got cattle grazing rights that actually extend onto the Area 51 land the ranch owner has to notify area 51 by radio whenever he's going to round up his cattle i guess here's the black mailbox the infamous black mailbox and area 51 itself is beyond this mountain range right by groom lake and if you zoom in you could see the facility right here you could see buildings you could see runways you don't know what they are and uh it's you could be assured that whatever you're seeing here has been approved uh, by the U.S. government for public release. But for the watchful eye, there's a few things uh, to keep in mind here. Take a look at this facility here. This isn't a mine. This is a cement plant. Now, a cement plant of this size generates a lot of cement. The runways are built. The buildings are built. So unless they're going to make any significant construction, there's not really a need for a huge cement plant like this unless that construction was underground tunnels, which it is believed that there are numerous underground tunnels here, as there are at most other government facilities in Nevada. So Area 51 itself is about 26 miles away from Tickaboo Peak. You can barely see it with the naked eye, and those with special equipment can see it really, really closely. Um, it was, was the hike worth it? I mean, yeah, if you want to see Area 51 with your own eyes, you can hike to the top of Tickaboo Peak. It's an interesting hike and a lot of fun um, I had doing it and I had filming it. So without further ado, let's uh, saddle up and hit the road and uh, drive out there and see what we find up on Tickaboo Peak.
so here's the deal i've got a flat tire you can see it right there it's in the middle of the tread so it's repairable but these tires are probably in need of replacement now i do have a spare tire factory spare back there um, which is a factory size not for off-roading but it may get me out, it should get me out of here but i've got this plug kit that appears to have worked um at least slowed the the flow of air it's not a truck plug kit it's a mountain bike plug kit so um it may be enough to get us out of here think the powers that be that this hole is in the middle of the tire if it was on the side we'd be changing the tire um like i said we're we're prepared for it if we have to and we're about 20 miles from the nearest gas station so it's consider it's a considerable trek out of here um so what i'm going to do at this time we're not that far from take peak i'm going to try to hump it i'm going to leave the truck here lock it when i come back i'll check the tire pressure thank god we've got onboard air so what i'll do when i come back i'm going to check this plug hopefully it will uphold or maybe even cure it or whatever it does and then um fill up the tire and slowly limp out of here and uh try to make it down that path and get out of here safely so i'm not too worried like i said i've got that tire there the spare we've got a plug kit i've got onboard air and worst case scenario if we had to hike 15 to 20 miles i can do it so we'll be all right so i met some nice folks who gave me a ride and as you can see the road is completely washed out that is about uh four to five feet to ditch and i just don't think it's passable so yeah you can't get a vehicle by there so what we're gonna do is just stop and try to walk out there and hike and uh, that's about all we could do it's about a mile to the trailhead and about a mile to the peak so two four it could be a five mile a day round trip but that's not a big deal we'll be fine all right so we're uh, we're heading out on foot they just told me it's about 1.7 miles to the trailhead so we're gonna try to we're gonna try to hoof it and uh, as you can see yeah the road's washed out so i'm going to keep uh just keep going now 1.7 miles on this it's a slight uphill um, I'm not feeling too winded right now, and uh, I don't think it should be too bad, so we'll see. Probably somewhere on top of those mountains way up there, so we'll go and see if we can make it. So the folks gave me a ride. They're back there. I told them I'd probably hike at a faster pace than they do, so I said I would go on first. And I'd see them on the way back. Sad indeed, no matter how remote you get, there'll always be trash. Trash and footprints. That's people for you. All right, I just stopped, readjusted my pack. My camelback bladder was leaking really bad. I lost about a quarter to a half of my water. And uh, I forgot to bring a spare water bottle like I always do. So what I have in that water bladder is all I have. And I thought I put the cap on for that water bladder. It looked like it was on, it felt like it was on, but I took it out and pressed and air came out so clearly the cap was not on. I think it's got a good seal right now, but I'll tell you what, I've uh, had a camel back. After this trip, I think I may start looking for a different pack that has a better way of uh, a better water bladder because this uh, screw on water cap on the camel back just isn't cutting it. It almost always leaks on me. And this is the second water bladder. The first one somehow sprung a leak. Um, so yeah. All right, so. Back where we left those folks, we started the uh, started the timer. For those keeping track, 1.67 miles. That means we get about a mile to the trailhead, probably somewhere in that saddle up there. So it's not that much longer. It's slightly uphill, but I feel perfectly fine. So we'll keep on going. And uh, again, I'm 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 really disappointed this camel back this leak, and I can feel the feel the back of my backpack that's just soaked. So, uh, real disappointed camelback right now. So hopefully I won't lose on my water. The reason it was leaking is because I could feel it dripping on my leg. So hopefully this wet backpack will dry quickly and we won't run, won't run out of water. Good thing is there's a group of four hikers behind me that are coming up. So if we're in trouble, they'll be there. All right, there's one mile mark. 2.57 feet elevation gain, not that big a deal. 18 minutes hiking means the uh, tour had to take a blue peak is about half a mile that way. We're almost there.
All right, should be about a quarter mile or so. I don't know how the sound was in that first uh, first part of the video, but for some reason the GoPro is defaulting to the camera mic. I reset the media mod, so the mic should be at the rear now and you should be able to hear me fine. Look, these hikes aren't on a trip to the grocery store. Things happen. You've got to check your equipment. You've got to be prepared. And uh, you've got to be prepared for the unexpected. I thought this was going to be an easy hike. I thought it'd be a smooth ride out there, an easy one mile hike. And okay, there's Area 51, you can barely see it, but that's it. And boom, but here we are. The camelback bladder was leaking. Lead to at least a quarter of our water or more. The GoPro medium mod wasn't set right. And for heaven's sake, we got a flat. I may get back to the truck, it's got a flat tire. But I've got a spare, I've got a plug kit, and I've got a uh, pretty good air compressor. But the unexpected happens. So let's get back, we'll air up and uh, Hopefully make it out of here. We've got about 1.61 miles on the clock. The guy gave us a ride and it's here 1.7 miles to the trailhead, so it's gotta be around here somewhere. Here's an old piece of trash from uh probably from the old mining days, just an old tin container, I'm guessing an oil or maybe gunpowder, who knows? So uh I mean there's mines all over the place out here, you never know. And the trailhead, Tikubu Peak, could be right here. I'm not sure. This is a turnaround for the trailhead, a parking area. But I'm going to keep walking this road as far as it goes. And I'm assuming the road will stop. And it'll turn into some kind of a single track trailhead. That's what I'm expecting. So if it's not right around this corner, I'll check the GPS. I did uh, download the area on Gaia GPS so I could view it offline. Thank God for that. Yeah. Fork in the road. Which way to go? This is where we're gonna pull out the GPS. I'm guessing this way, but I'm just not sure. Okay, so it looks like, looks like we're at the trailhead. So we'll keep going this way, uh, north. Yep, that is exactly where we're supposed to go, see? So it's not too far from here. So just right up there is where the road should end. So like I said, we're just about at the trailhead to take a boot peek. I'm seeing some some uh, objects around here, some concrete pipes. I'm not sure why they're here. Maybe some kind of a drainage control. Um, looks like this one is used for trash. And uh, we're gonna campfire over here. Look at some wire over there, or a fence, barbed wire fence. A couple campfires here. Clearly was a camping spot. Um, looks like the fire's been wet, so maybe nobody's been here since the last rain. And uh, I see some barbed wire fence, so looks like a berm or something here. And I'm gonna walk up it just to see if there's anything up here. Because sometimes where you see berms like this, it's a mine. I don't see anything up here, but it's dark. Like there's been a fire or something up here. Very strange. Um, there's another like uh, water tank over there. So I don't know what was out here before, but we have like a barbed wire fence, a couple campfires. Lots of beer bottles. Here's some old uh, metal debris from a long time ago. And uh, and that's it, I'm not seeing anything else around here, but if you look off in the woods, there's maybe another berm out there. I'm not gonna waste my time because we still got about another mile to go to Tickaboo Peak. Uh, but you look in these woods here, there could be something right in front of you and you won't see it till you ride on it. That's why you gotta have sharp eyes and keep your eyes open because you never know what you're gonna see. Those hikers will probably come up, they're not too far behind me. But we're gonna continue on, and I believe this is uh, this is the path to Tikapu Peak. This looks like I saw the road, so I don't think we're actually on the trail yet, but it's around here somewhere. According to Guy, I should just be right up here. And yet the road keeps on going. So we'll just, uh, we'll follow it and see where it goes. Coming up to a clearing up here where some trees have been cut down for unknown reasons. And it looks like this might be where the road ends. So, see some tire tracks here. 
And I, I seriously doubt they made it through that uh, that washed out road we just came from. The road appears to go a little bit further, but I would expect that right around here somewhere at the end of the road and the trail of Tickaboo Peak will start. Now I've never been here, so I don't know what to expect. This could be it. It's hard to say. Just when I think I reached the trailhead, the road appears to keep going. So I'm just kind of following this road to see when it stops and where the trailhead starts. Now I've seen Gaia GPS give incorrect coordinates in the past, but according to this, we have passed the actual Tickaboo Peak Trailhead. The trailhead was back where those, where those trees were cut down back there and the road keeps going. So I'm gonna follow this and uh, see if this if this actually is the trail to Tickaboo Peak. I suspect it is. It's uh, it's remote. Not many people go up here, but yet a lot of people have been up here. So I, I don't expect to be blazing new trails. I would expect a well-worn path. And so far, that's what we're seeing. So let's uh, keep pressing on, get to that peak. Seriously, I need to be more careful. Second freaking time I lost a glove. This time I found it. I got a feeling I need them up here because it gets cold. Thank God I found it. I'm just going to be more careful next time. Onward. All right, I come to kind of a fork in the road here, a couple of different directions. Now, I know this is the trail to Sikabu Peak, but so far I really think I could have made it in the truck. Um, there's a campfire over there. Here's some kind of a old pipe on the ground. And here is some sort of a rock structure. It might have been a campfire at one time. I'm not sure that somebody made. So clearly this was a camping spot. Now, as far as where to go, let's see, uh, looking at Gaia GPS, you can see right there, I'm just trying to get oriented. Okay. Okay. Usually the arrow will change and show me which direction I'm walking, but the arrow is not changing. So, um, I think it's this way. Don't be surprised if Tickaboo Peak is up there somewhere. So I'm gonna keep on walking and let's see. Yeah, so the arrow just changed. It looks like we are going the right way, I think. Kind of see right there. And that's how far we come from the, uh, the trailhead. Hold on, let me zoom out here real quick and I'll show you. Right there, so almost a quarter of a mile away. Now, so far I can take this with the truck, but something like this, I would say probably not. Um, I mean, technically, yeah, but this is some rock crawling and with other folks, maybe. But you hit some of these big rocks with the truck and you could damage the vehicle. Now the ground's wet up here, so it looks like it may have rained not too long ago. Um, had some precipitation. It's not really muddy, but the ground is definitely damp. So I'm gonna keep the phone in the hand and check the GPS frequently to make sure we're going the right way. And uh, you can see how rugged the trail is getting. Yeah, I don't think a vehicle could have done this. Even a dirt bike would be kind of challenging because it's really rugged stuff. So we'll press on and get there about three, about a quarter of the way from the trailhead to the peak. I know you can see a reflector here. Somebody put, clearly there's a marker of some sort, so I'm guessing we're going the right way, but I'm not sure. Look at the tire tracks. So, um, yeah, like I said, a truck can make it, but you're risking some serious damage. We already had a flat today that hopefully I can keep buried off enough to at least get back to the main road. 6,800 foot level, then there's a reflector. The trail's got a lot more rugged and a lot steeper. I think you could do it with a, a high clearance 4x4, but it'd be tough. And you're risking damaging the vehicle. Here's a little clearing, campfire in the middle, maybe somebody camped there. And I can see some tracks going this way, so I suspect this is uh, the trail to the peak. So we're gonna keep on going. Okay, 2.32 um, miles when we started walking. 700 foot elevation gain. My heart rate's about 144 beats per minute. 
you could see the trail is getting significantly steeper and more rugged. Can I do it in a 4x4? Look, you could do most things in a 4x4, but you're taking a risk. You're risking damaging the vehicle and getting stuck out here and getting yourself in a survival situation. Dirt bike, yeah, maybe a two-stroke. Uh, my dirt bike, it'd be challenging, but I could maybe do it. But honestly, I think I think hiking out here, as long as you're in shape, is the best option. I'm getting out of breath, but it's damn near 7,000 foot elevation. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, how steep it is. And look at these mountains. I suspect Tickaboo is probably up there in that saddle somewhere. So we're, we're not far. Less than a mile, I suspect. And coming back should be easy because it's all downhill. But getting up there is a challenge. All right, you can see we're not far. And if you see those, those, uh, those lines, how close together they are, you can see there's some steep stuff we're going. So I'm guessing Tickaboo Peak is probably up there somewhere. Looking back over there, you can see it's a great view. And uh, looking around, we're, we're high up there, probably close to 7,000 feet. There's tire tracks here, so people are driven up here. I mean, you get some narrow, narrow wheelbase Jeeps with some big tires, big suspension, drivers with balls of steel. Yeah, you can make it up here. You can, certainly can. My truck's a little bit bigger than your standard Jeep, a little bit longer. And my tires, although those BF Goodrich tires are good, Clearly they're in need of replacement. And one of them has uh, got a pretty bad leak in them. So there's just no way in the world I would have taken my truck up here. Would have made it? Yeah, maybe. But again, it's, I think it's an unnecessary risk. Now this road we're taking, it's almost like a road. It's wide enough to be a road. So look at the tire tracks, people been up here. Maybe not recently, but they have. So the good thing is this road is consistent with what I'm seeing on Guy GPS, which means I'm more than likely going the right way. And somewhere up over those mountains, at a distance of 26 miles, is Area 51. And if we're lucky, we'll see it with our own eyes today. Let's press on. I hear the campfire. Um, maybe a small rock here and there. And over here is a yellow ribbon tied in a bush and there's some tracks. A truck or quite possibly a side-by-side. -side. So now side-by-side -side up here with high clearance could easily make it. Well, definitely make it. And we're plugging along. Now this goes down here and I don't want to go down and have to go back up someplace. I'm gonna check the GPS again and orient myself because I suspect somewhere over that hill is Tickaboo Peak. And I just soon not go down and have to come back up somewhere. So the path over there, see which way we're going, try to orient myself. This word says the trail is, but I don't see a trail anymore. So clearly we have to go up somewhere. So somewhere around here, there's gotta be a trail. But there is no trail. And I didn't think we'd have to go back down. I'm trying to follow this uh, supposed marked trail on Gaia. And according to this, we are exactly on the trail, but I don't see a trail. Unless we gotta go cross country or hoof it. But look at these lines. Yeah, it looks straight this way. Up the peak. Is this it? Like I said, expecting a well-worn trail, but where we're at is off trail. And uh, you could see these lines here, it gets much steeper. But we're going the right way. That's got to be it up there. And I do see a, a ribbon, so it looks like maybe somebody put a marker up there. 
Maybe it's over here somewhere. Like I said, I was expecting a well-worn path. I'm just not seeing it. Unless this is it. Yeah, this might be it. All right, well. Maybe this is the, this is the trail. It looks like a path. And I see a marker up there. A ribbon in that bush, so. I think this is probably the, the right way. Ticket booth gotta be on top of that hill somewhere. Yep. Look at these red marks, these uh, red flags somebody tied on the bushes. One there and one over there. Oh man, what a hike. Now, back down there where the campfire is, you probably could have drove to it, but from here, this is foot. Maybe hard and duro, but I wouldn't risk it. This is a hike. Let's keep going. Here's some more strings with some stuff tied in the bushes. There's another, some kind of a ribbon in the bush, and you can kind of see well, it looks like a well-worn path here. So clearly, I think this is the right way. Thank God for guide GPS. Now, you remember when we first came in, it was a smooth dirt road, sandy hard pack, 45 miles an hour. I thought, man, this could be a piece of cake. Then we got a flat. Then we climbed up to, what we climb up to? 7,100 feet, 1,000 foot elevation gain. It's no joke. But we're getting closer to see what we came out to see. So let's get up there. Well, look at the view out there. We are way up here, deep in the middle of nowhere. And this looks like it's the rocky path to Tickaboo Peak. Now, for those of you who haven't seen my videos before, I use a floaty stick to carry the GoPro. It's just easiest for me. It's best for voice, best frame in the camera, and there's some other folks out here who use the helmet mount. And if you look, that's the whole video looks like, the ground. But with this floaty stick, I can keep it eye level and look through the viewfinder and know and I'm getting a good quality video. Let me check the GPS real quick. Make sure we're on the right path. And uh, we'll press on. All right, so far we're uh, a little off the trail, but that's fine. Um, we'll just press forward and 7,200 feet, we'll keep on going. All right, 7,300 feet. Tickaboo Peak is clearly right up there somewhere. So straight up that way is where we need to go. Not really a trail going across country and it's noticeably colder up here than it is down in the lowlands. So um, if I did have to spend the night up here, there's plenty of brush, but definitely I don't want to spend the night. Good thing is going down is it's all downhill, so it should be considerably easier going down than it is getting up there. But you can see how rugged this stuff is. And again, there's not really a trail. Well, there may be, I just don't know where it is. I thought we were following one, but Tickaboo Peak should be straight up there and that's where we're going. I'm just trying to find the easiest route up there. I see a lot more trees and brush around here than the National Wildlife Reserve where we usually go. Here's kind of a small clearing. Now again, there could be a nice trail on the other side over there, but I just can't see it. So I'm trying to see as close as I can to the uh, marked path that's on Guy GPS. And I know for the most part, we just gotta go straight up this way. So that's where we're going. And I'm checking the GPS every now and then to make sure we're going the right way. And so far we are. Hopefully that'll get us there. I'm just going a little stopping and resting, going a little stopping and resting. Cause it, uh, it can wear you out. 
So here's another one of those yellow ribbons. Not tied in, it's just on the ground. So I'm assuming we're going the right way. I know it, but we gotta go straight up, so we're gonna keep on going. All right, continuing with the steep, uh, steep climb. Take a little peek, should be straight ahead. Not too much further. I was able to pull two bars of a 5G signal and uh, send a text message out to let folks back home know that I got a flat, it's plugged, and I should be able to make it back somehow, and I'm okay. But for now, we're gonna continue on, and I see it to the peak, I see a, a red ribbon up there, so I'm assuming this is, uh, this is the way to go. Now looking here, I think this is, yeah, this has gotta be the path up there. I don't know if you can see way out there that long road. That's probably the road area 51. You could take a little peek on top of this mountain. Let's keep on going. And hopefully get out of these hills before dark. It's a hellacious climb, man. See, there's a marker. But yeah, I can see this is clearly the path we're supposed to be on. Oh man, what a hike. Okay, okay. It's not vertical, but it's super steep. We're almost there. 7,400 feet, 1,200 feet elevation gain. Let's keep on going. What a hike. All right, haven't seen wildlife on that badger on the way out. Wouldn't be surprised if we see jets or aircraft flying overhead. Area 51 is about 26 miles that way, but you never know, they might not be flying today. So we'll keep on going. Another marker. Another marker. It's extremely steep. So we're gonna take it slow and keep on going. Okay, that might be it up there. This is a near vertical climb. Loose rock, super steep, super steep hill. Extreme elevation gain. Pushing 8,000 feet in elevation. My goodness. Yeah, that's some rough stuff. It just really, really steep. I can't say it was worth it, but I can say I'm not gonna come all the way out here and not give my best. To the point where we started walking, but this folks dropped us off. 3.2 miles, 1300 foot elevation gain which means we have at least three miles to walk back to the truck, probably closer to four. And then we gotta pray that that tire's not flat. And that's what we gotta hike up. Now, that's a rocks here that we should be able to climb just like a set of stairs. Oh my gosh, without losing our balance. And we may be pretty close to the peak. I'm hoping we're close to the peak. So let's get up these rocks and get up there and check the GPS. Okay, there's another ribbon. I check GPS, find out which direction we're going. Now I thought the peak was up there. Look at the GPS between the uh, trailhead and where we're going. We're about halfway. A little like it's that way. So we're, we've got a ways to go. And uh, clearly we gotta go that way, so. Let's keep getting on top of this hill and get to this damn peak. Okay, I thought it was up this hill, but checking the GPS, Chickaboo straight that way, so it may very well be on that saddle up there. 
uh, and I think it is. So we're gonna have to skirt this, not really a cliff, but just a super steep hill. And I could see a, uh, a red ribbon up there, so something somebody tied. So it looks like it looks like a path here. I'm pretty sure this is the right way to go, and uh, the peak should be straight, straight that way. So that's where we're going. Traversing these rocks, a narrow single track. Uh, you know, a skilled rider on a two-stroke might be able to make it through this, but for the most part, this is something you're gonna have to do on foot. There's just no other way. Yeah. Good thing is I can see somewhat of a path here. So I'm guessing this is the right way to go. Like I said, uh, yeah, here's, here's another red ribbon. I don't know who tied these ribbons here, but I'm good if somebody did. Yeah, I'm sure you can see that path ahead of us. That's gotta be the way. Okay, we're going to open area and uh, see a large, large clearing way, way down there. Now you can't see if I were directly where I'm pointing the GoPro, I see what appears to be possibly some structures. It's a long ways away. Now what, I, what I've heard about Area 51 is this mountain range you see way out there, Area 51 is beyond that. So you might be able to see it. Now we're not at Tickaboo Peak. Tickaboo Peak I think is up there. That's where we gotta go. And I could see some red ribbons so I'm pretty sure we're on the right way. Well, you see another one right there. Pretty sure we're going the right way. It's not as steep as the climb as we just did, thank gosh. But uh, I'm guessing somewhere on top of that hill it is Tickaboo Peak, so we'll press on. All right, it's a beautiful land out here. I don't know if you could see it, but on top of the mountain up there is a communications tower, and I was told there is one up by Tickaboo Peak, so. It's got to be straight that way. I just don't see a path to it, but I'm sure there is a way um, to get up there. And again, you see that community weather. I think it's a weather station. I'm not sure, but anyway, we'll we'll be right by it. So let's press on, find a path. I'm gonna double check the GPS and hopefully we're going the right way. But yeah, that's more than likely to take a peak right up there. We just gotta come around here and find a way up there. Probably straight this way. Got this big rock rock in the way so I'm trying to find a way around it. it looks like a cliff on the other side so it's got to be this way somewhere I'm not seeing a path but it's got to be a way because directly on the other side of this rock is Tickaboo Peak so from the rock it sort of looks like the path comes down and around so that's what I'm gonna try to do carefully and uh, yeah I think I see some footprints and I think this is the right way See kind of a trail here. And we'll just uh, follow it and hopefully it leads us around and then back up there on top of Tikabu Peak somehow. I don't know if Tikabu Peak is there or there, but I do see a red ribbon flapping in the, the woods up there and there's a communications tower. So clearly we need to climb this mountain. I just need to find an easy way. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's a red ribbon, so we're going the right way. There's a red ribbon up there, so. All right, just did a quick battery change on the GoPro. Clearly this is the right way. I see the uh, the red ribbon up there and there's another one halfway up the hillside. So this obviously is the way to take a blue peak. It's, uh, it's an established path. I don't know how many people come up here a year, but clearly more than a few. It's, uh, it's really well known and one of the few places in the world you can actually see Area 51 with your own eyes. You see these mountains and the train out here is beautiful. But it can be treacherous, so you gotta really be careful. There's another marker. And uh, we keep pressing on at uh, what we suspect is a path. There's another marker there. Now, do we go here or do we go down there? These markers lead us down there, so that's where we're gonna go. I'm assuming that's the right way. Yep, a marker there, a couple more up here. And we just keep on falling up the top of that hill somewhere up there. Let's take a little peek. All right, so we've got another marker here, uh, a rock cairn. It looks like somebody made kind of a path in, in the ribbon down there. So clearly this is 
this is the right way to go. And you can see how the ground's compacted here from people stepping on it, so obviously we're going the right way, I'm assuming, to take a boot peek. We're not the first ones out here, won't be the last. But uh, there's a marker there. So with uh, the guy GPS app showing us the path and these markers, um, see another one up here. It's not that difficult to find our way out here um, if you keep your eyes open for them. Now at night would be a different story, of course. And uh, um, it's not challenging, but if you run out of food or water, you're screwed, of course. Coming through here, see marker up over there. Looks like there may have been a campfire here at one point in time. And the marker here. And at this point, I'm just following markers. And I'm checking the guy GPS app every now and then to make sure we're on the right path. And, to, and we are, there's a rock cairn. More markers this way. I usually don't like going where other people have been. Um, but in this case, I'm, these markers are a welcome sight. It shows us we're on the right path. All right, here's where we're starting to get her a little rugged. Climbing some rocks. Markers up there. Oh man. Now we stopped at that little store to gas up in Alamo, Nevada, on the way out here. And they unfortunately were sold out of breakfast. So we had a couple of donuts. Not, uh, not the ideal breakfast, but the sugar and carbs are helping us. But I'm getting hungry. I've got freeze-dried food if needed. But I'm gonna try to make it back to the truck without eating, just to save for emergencies. Let's press on. All right. Just follow markers. Getting closer and closer. Where we're going is straight up there. We're almost there, we're getting much closer, so let's keep on going. Traversing this uh, this steep hill, this rugged terrain, and uh, man, we're close. Let's keep on going. It's a climb. Look at these rocks. Man, just like a set of stairs or a ladder. All this for what? Well, it doesn't matter what for. We came this far. I could turn back without getting where we're getting to the destination that we set out to get to. Fairly certain ticket will peaks right up there. Not much farther, but I don't see any more markers. Um, but based on what GPS said, it's right up there. So we're gonna keep pressing on and make it. All right, I am very close to Tickaboo Peak, and for some reason I had two bars to signal, so just made a very brief phone call to let the folks back in the rear know that I'm I'm okay. Truck's about three and a half miles down the road. Well, it's a three and a half mile hike from here. So what we're doing right now is just trying to traverse up to the top of this mountain to get to Tickaboo Peak, which I believe is on the right up there somewhere. I don't see a path or trail, so we're just kind of bushwhacking um to try to get up there the best we can i want to show you how rough some of this terrain is we're traversing over rocks and uh going straight up i don't see a path so we're just we're just going up trying to find the easiest way we can through a uh, thick brush rocks and whatnot. So far I feel all right, but I'll tell you what, I can go for a good meal. But that's just not a luxury we have right now. I will get to Tickaboo Peak. I will get up there. We will get up there. Looks like a little rock cropping make a decent shelter if we had to stay here but I don't want to stay here 
I want to get back home. Let's get around this and get up here. Crawl through these bushes and get up this hill. We're almost the summit. We came the hard way. I think the, the path is down there. Now over there, I see a red ribbon. And up over there, I see the communications tower. Looks like it's got a power from solar paneling. And I see what appears to be a camera on top of it. I'm assuming that's some kind of weather station. Or it could be for uh, one of Area 51's early sensors. Who knows? I don't know how good that camera is. So it could be watching us right now. But that's fine. They're going on YouTube. All right, so where we need to go, I believe, is this way. And Tickaboo Peak may be just right over there. So let's roll film at least till we get to this next marker. And uh, see if that's it. Because based on the GPS, we're damn close. I'm just trying to watch these rocks. Because you break a leg or twist your ankle out here, you're screwed. But the only thing I could do is fire my pistol three times in the air and hopefully somebody hears that as a distress signal. Well, I, I do have, I do have cell, well, at least I did back there have cell service, but you're not gonna get out of here. That's maybe a helicopter and that's sort of the last thing I wanna do. All right, there's a marker. I'm assuming it's right around here somewhere. From what I've seen in the pictures, people have built like a uh, kind of a wall, a little lookout up there. So let's keep going and see where it is. I hope I don't have to climb on top of that hill up there. I really hope I don't. Man. All right. I don't think this would take a blue peak. We've gone the mountain range, I see some buildings that I believe is very 51, 26 miles away. So if anything, we could say we made it in Sierra 51. Let me check GPS and see how much farther we gotta go. Told you I don't wanna climb that peak over there, but that's exactly where we have to go. I just checked GPS. So that's, that's evidently Tickaboo Peak. So let's uh, try to find a, an easy trail up there and make it to the top. We're, we're almost, almost there, it's in sight. It's a little bit of wind up here. It's getting chilly. So the marker. Imagine we would get bitter cold at night. Now going back down should should be less of a challenge because it's all downhill. We got gravity working with us, which trust me, we're gonna need it. All right, flat ground. A little campfire. Somebody camped up here. That'd be kind of cool. And uh, following these markers, that's evidently Tickaboo Peak up there. So. This is the right way. We must have just went off the, the beaten path and went over some rough terrain, but that's fine. We'll still get where we're going. Yeah, straight shot right after that comms tower. I'm getting out of breath, man. Those of you watching the number, 3.74 miles, 1729 elevation gain. My heart rate's almost 150 BPS. There's a marker, there's a comms tower camera may be watching us, I don't know. But straight ahead, I believe, is Tickaboo Peak. A stone's throw away. Let's keep going. All right, there's uh, another ribbon, the comms tower. Now, one more time, you guys, ask why don't you wear a helmet cam? But look, I'm looking down where I'm going. As you can see, I'm holding the camera up. So this is much better views than if I had a helmet cam. It's a rough, it's a rough climb, but uh, here's the comms tower, and here, I believe, is Tickaboo Peak. See the camera up there? Lots of cameras. Some kind of a weather station, I'm assuming. Oh my God, what a climb! All right, yeah, it is. Just like, just like the ones we saw in the uh, GPS expedition video and 
Desert National Wildlife Reserve. Look at this. Looks like somebody's been up here up with their mark. But uh, this sign shows what it is. I'm not going to read it. You can pause the video and read it if you want. But here's the weather station. So we're going to continue up. And I believe this, my friend, I could see that little bunker wall people have built. This is Tickaboo Peak. We did it. Woo! Man, there's an echo out here. All right. Do you see this first? Take a look in this valley. You see that long line in the valley down there? And that set of mountain the distance? Beyond those set of mountains. I don't know if you can see those buildings. I'm gonna pull up the binoculars in a minute and hold up with the GoPro. Maybe you can see, maybe you can, but I can assure you straight ahead, that's Area 51. I could see buildings. I could see Area 51. The weird thing is, is out there, I could see some kind of a settlement or, um, I don't know, buildings or something. So I'm check on Google Earth and see what that is. I think this is probably all in the government area. If you can get out there, I'm sure that uh, the people would have, but I, I believe this is as far as you can get to, the closest you can get to Area 51. Um, so whatever that is out there, it's probably government. I'll pull the binos just a minute and check. But yeah, that's Area 51. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we made it. Tickaboo Peak, people have left trash. This uh, this uh, jar with a, a string around me, I, think, I believe the sign-in book, we'll sign that in just a moment. And then here, there you go. We did it. Take a quick break. I just want to show you this right here is a, a canister where I guess you're supposed to sign your name as being up here. And uh, usually it's just a pen and paper to sign your name, but uh, looks like somebody says donation to the lady of the black budget fund. And uh, evidently somebody left some weed up here. Yeah, weed. Unbelievable. No, I don't, I don't do that. Believe it or not, I don't. So I'm just going to leave this where I saw it. And, uh, See if there's something to sign, and then I'm gonna head out of here. All right, I just signed the Tickaboo Peak guest book. Evidently, somebody left some weed inside there, so um, that could either be considered um, somebody to be thankful for or something to be um, shocked or disgusted at. I don't know. Like I said, myself personally, I don't, I don't do that stuff. Um, I've got a history in law enforcement, so that's something I'm proud of, and uh, I just choose not to partake in that. Although I may have an occasional beer, but um, for the most part, my body is a machine and I do my best to take care of it. We are at 8,000 feet on top of Tickaboo Peak and uh, the average person couldn't do this. It, it takes a lot out of you. I've got about four and a half miles to get back to the truck and uh, you could see as far as the eye could see, I believe that's all government land. I don't know where the actual boundary is, but uh, this peak right here, you could see every fit you went out here. So I'm going to take off the pack. Um, have a quick snack, pull up the binoculars, and see if I can see Area 51, and then we'll head back. All right, so straight out there, you might not be able to see it, but with the binos, I'm looking. I'm trying to see if I can focus through here. I don't think you could see it. So that's what it looks like holding the GoPro up to the binoculars. It just simply doesn't work, unfortunately. So I can't show you what I'm seeing, but I'm looking through the binoculars right now, and I can, um, I can tell you what I'm seeing. Straight ahead... Um, you may or may not be able to see it. It looks like some buildings. That is some kind of a little complex. I don't think it's a ranch. Uh, they look like some uh, buildings with some round circular things on top. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I could see it with the binoculars, but I can't see clear enough to see what it is. Area 51. I, uh, you can make out some buildings from here. You probably can't see it in the video, but trust me, I can, I can see it. Um, I can see some hangars. I can see some runways. Um, but it's, it's, believe me, you can look up uh, pictures online or see Google Earth satellite pictures that look far more clear than that. So is Tickaboo Peak the best place to see Area 51? No, Google Earth is. Google Earth is far superior. You can see all the buildings really clear. You can't see what they are, but you could certainly see them. Uh, but from here, with your own naked eyes, you can see Area 51. It's just 26 miles away. It's, it's a long ways. And these binoculars I have are great. Um, the standard T28, T28. 1028 10 by 28 binoculars are really awesome but um, unfortunately they don't they don't get in far enough so maybe with some special lenses you could see way out there 
I'm interested to see what this compound is out there, so I can't wait to check Google Earth when I get back. So um, I'm going to look around a little bit more with the binoculars, um, see if there's anything else interesting around here, and then I'm going to pack up and go. I've already signed the guest book, and uh, you can see the position of the sun up there. The sun's going to go down right over there, so it's, it's, it's definitely more than halfway to go down. And at this time of year, it's going to be dark at 5 or 6, and I've already got 2 p.m. So, like I said, I'm going to look around a little bit more, and I'm going to start making the trek back. So we got about four and a half miles to go. Mostly downhill, so we should be in better shape than we were coming up here. But uh, we still got to get back to the truck. And then hope that tire didn't go flat, and uh, we'll air it up a little bit with our compressor and uh, hopefully make it back to the pavement. And like I said, worst case scenario... Um, I've got uh, the spare tire and believe it or not. I just had a video call up here I've got five bars of cell signal, so it's remote, but uh, not that remote down there where we got to go is um, There'll be no bars, but uh, we should be as long as I'm careful. We'll be able to make it fine. So uh, We'll check back in just a moment. All right This is the point in the video where I did the live stream. It was less than eight minutes uh, But I had four or five bars up there. I guess the Take a peak was in full view of one of the cell towers. So it was kind of cool. I wanted to give anybody who was out there a chance to uh, join, uh, see what I was seeing firsthand, ask any questions, and just kind of see what it's like up there on top of Take a peak. It was kind of cool. And uh, like I said, just a very brief live stream. And uh, that was it. So um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you could see it posted on the main page. And that's about it. Back to the video. All right. That's enough fun for one day. We just finished the live stream. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, for some strange reason, I've got five bars up here, probably because that's Alamo, Nevada way out there, and we're more than likely in full view of a cell tower, so, um, why not, uh, show you guys real time what I'm doing, so, at any rate, that's, uh, this is Tickable Peak, uh, we came, we saw, we did what we had to do, and, uh, that's about it, we'll do the rest on Google Earth later, but, uh, without further ado, I've got, uh, 2.27 p.m. Let's get out of here. The weather's, the weather's actually beautiful up here. So we're going to try to come down the same way we went uh, along that ridge line. And then uh, once we get to the top of the ridge, we'll go straight down in that valley, follow the valley back to the truck down the road. So um, let's get out of here safely. Um, hopefully we made it back to the truck without getting a flat. Obviously, if you're watching the video, I've, I've made it back somehow. Um, but I'll go over a little bit later what an ordeal it was if it was even an ordeal so best case scenario the uh the plug i put in the tire holds will air up, up a little bit and we might be able to limp back to las vegas on a tire that's been plugged and hopefully we'll uh, discount tires open tomorrow we'll um we'll go there and, and just buy a new tire i should probably end up having to buy four new ones which is not going to be cheap but what can you do with the price you pay for coming out here and doing what you're Doing what you love doing. So there's a tower. Goodbye, Tickaboo Peak. Goodbye, Area 51. Um, 26 miles from the most secretive uh, military base in the world. Um, believe it or not, I've actually been closer. I was at the uh, did the national test site tour a couple of weeks ago, and uh, one of the places we visited out there was Sedan Crater. And Sedan Crater is, believe it or not, it's two miles from a guard shack. To Area 51, and overall it is 13 miles from Area 51. 13 miles, Sedan Crater, but that is the national test site, and that's something that uh, the average person just can't get to. You've got to have a uh, sign up for a tour. So let's go ahead and find the way down. I see some uh, markers over there, and we're just going to do our best to follow these markers back to that ridge line over there and get out of here and just kind of let gravity be our guide. I'm seeing more markers out here, and this is where we need it the most in these in these woods. And um, so clearly, this is the way to go. Thank goodness. And we're just going to follow these markers, hopefully all the way back, at least to the what looks like a road. But it's kind of strange because the trail we we went from the trailhead um, up the trail, and the trail looks like it was something you could drive on. Then it kind of got to a point where. The road would have kept going, but uh, where we had to go was up a hill, and we are kind of uh, bushwhacking, just going where there's no trail, which is kind of like we're doing right now. And I'm just looking for these red markers in the tree that somebody put um, to find our way down and make it out of here. Um, it hasn't been too bad of a hike. Now, I did take a brief rest up there. It had a cliffs bar and some water and, uh, of course, that live stream. And that uh, I feel a little bit better. 
uh, but we still got about four miles to get back to the truck. It's all downhill, but it's still freaking four miles to a truck with a tire that's got a hole in it that hopefully we can, hopefully that patch holds so we can get out of here before dark. If not, this video could get real interesting. Just kind of show you we're following these, uh, not really a path that I could see out here, but it's, it's really rocky terrain and following these, uh, these red ribbons that somebody put out here, thank goodness it's a godsend, certainly makes things much, much easier. So that's what we're trying to do. Big difference up here to the terrain over the uh, desert that you're used to. All right, hopefully these ribbons are leading us in the right direction. All right, it looks like it's a straight shot, but it's a rough straight shot. As you can see, a lot of rocks, a lot of uneven terrain. But uh, thank goodness for whoever left these. Look, if this is you that left these, if you're watching this video and you're the one left these ribbons, please comment below. I want to thank you. Uh, they certainly make things so much easier up here. I could pull out the GPS, but uh, it's all better to save battery if somebody's been out here and has this area marked. Just again, showing you the terrain we're traversing coming down here. You can see the sun behind us. It's going to be dark quick, and it may very well be dark by the time we get out of here. Um, believe it or not, I brought an extra flashlight. I don't know why. Just I said, look, it's here. Um, it's that beast flashlight we used on the uh, the night beast hike, and the batteries aren't well, we're, aren't fresh, but they should still be good. And for some strange reason, I don't know. I just uh, I saw it there. I said, you know what? Better have it not needed than need it not have it. And with a, a potential flat tire we're facing. Well, it is flat. I mean, a potential tire change, um, we may very well end up needing it. So we'll see if we can get out of here before the sun goes down. And uh, once we get back on the pavement, I'm not too concerned. I can, I can call somebody for help then. Um, but otherwise, see if we can get back to the truck, at least to the truck and get rolling before dark. Okay, it's much easier going down, but it doesn't mean it's not steep and dangerous, which it is. So I'm just trying to traverse these rocks the best I can. You can see how rough it is. Um, and coming up wouldn't have been any easy, would have been wouldn't have been any easier than the route we went. So I could see somewhat of a path. And like I said, thank God for these markers. They're guiding our way. Almost slipped. Now, I do know that we gotta get on the other side of that big rock over there, so. Uh, we still got a considerable distance to go over rough terrain, but once we make it to the main road, um, it shouldn't be that bad. There's something in here. What is this? Is this trash? That's yeah, just trash. I got a bad feeling where it's going to be dark before we get out of here, but that's fine. I'm not afraid. All right, I'll show you right now, it's it's a little steep, but it's not that steep. Uh, well, it is that steep actually, but we're making it. And like I said, we'll climb up this hill on the other side of that rock and then traverse that way in the back into this valley over here. And from there, it's down a really steep hill. And once we get to the road, it should be all gravy from then on out. Should be, should be fairly easy. All right, there's the marker. We're going down now, we're going back up. And here's that section we passed earlier where somebody put the rock cairn. Looks like a stack of books. All right, you can see the, uh, the uh, comms tower up there where you just were. Here's this uh, rock. And we're making good progress. So we're gonna traverse along the side of this uh, our hillside <clears throat> to get back across over here over this hill and into the valley there's another marker right there all right there's a marker and it looks like this is the way down so if that's the case i think we came up over there so i think we were way off but as long as this gets us where we're going which it should we'll be okay but this is extremely steep and we end up going down this in our butt so i'm going to be really careful
And uh, I'm not going to roll film for this. I'm going to need two hands for this. I'll have the GoPro uh, put aside. But um, <clears throat> we're making progress. It's all downhill from here. All right, I said I wasn't going to roll film, but I actually am. This is uh, this is really steep stuff. So if something happens, um, we'll be able to see it. But you can see how long of a hill. And I may have to come down. Okay, so I'm kind of almost sitting. And if I have to, I'll just slide down on my boots. But this is extremely steep. And you can see my feet slipping there. But yeah, if I start sliding going to free fall, um, let's just say over these rocks is not going to be fun. So we're just slowly trying to climb and make our way down this. Oh my goodness. And once we get down, like I said, to that road, it should pretty much be gravy. It's just getting down the steep section of the road. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. All right. We're getting there. That's where we just came from. And that's where we're going. Okay, careful. I'm kind of on my butt right now. Just trying to lower myself down because it's so steep. I don't even know how much further we have to go to the bottom. That's what I want to avoid because once you start sliding like that and gaining speed, you can't stop until you hit something, which I'm trying to avoid. So, yeah, I've got a GoPro in one hand, but oh, I've got the other one available to use if necessary. And again, I know what you're thinking, helmet cam, but you know what? The helmet cam doesn't have a good angle as this, this floaty stick does. Because my eyes are on my feet right down there, so the helmet cam will be looking at that. Oh my gosh. All right, I see another, uh, another ribbon up there, so I know we're going the right way. Man, I can't believe people climb this. One of those markers, just taking baby steps, coming down this hill with baby steps to keep our balance. Oh my goodness. All right, more markers down there. See, so, yeah, we're going the right way. Man, this is a, a workout for my legs, I'll tell you what. My legs are getting sore. So far, 4.52 miles, elevation gain 1892. But of course we're going down, which is good. All right, not as steep, but uh, it's a straight shot down there. I don't know how much further we have to go to get to that road, uh, what looks like a road, but I'm uh, fairly certain we're going the right way because because uh, of these these ribbons, these red ribbons somebody put. Now grant I'm not checking the GPS, so I'm just assuming that these ribbons are getting us where we need to go with that and I can, See, we're on a well-worn path. All right, we're making progress. I'm still following these red markers, ribbons of people tied in the tree. Um, we're in a wooded area. You can see up there we just came. Um, it's been a monstrous climb. We're almost at almost 2,000 foot elevation gain. I'll tell you what, I don't know what to expect out here, but I know a lot of people have been in Tickaboo. Uh, it's somewhat famous to get eyes on Area 51, so. I thought I'd be able to damn near drive up to it, do an easy mile hike, and then boom, you're up there and maybe even see some snack bars or tour shops or something, but nothing could be farther from the truth. This is a grueling, grueling hike. Um, somebody in decent physical condition obviously can do it. I did it, but uh, most people, I would say, no, don't even try it. This is a grueling hike. It's tough. I mean, look, we we're coming downhill for a long time, and we climbed up this. It's It's a challenge, so... Let's keep on going and get out of here, hopefully before dark. All right, another rock cairn there, and uh, there's a ribbon. So it looks like we're going the right way. See the shadow in front of us, that means the sun's directly behind us, about to go down. 
Um, I got 3 p.m. Um, daylight savings time isn't for another couple weeks, which means it'll be uh, 4 p.m. But uh, here in Southern Nevada, it gets it gets dark at around 4 p.m. So it's gonna get dark soon when that sun goes down. So I'm gonna try to get as far as I can. It's gonna suck working on the truck in dark, getting that tire repaired. But if I have to do it, I'm confident I can. All right, we may have reached the bottom. Yeah, we did reach the bottom of the hill. Thank God. Oh, geez, Louise, look at this. All right, this campfire right here, just for reference, do the Tickaboo Peak hike. Look for the campfire, and then look for this path right there. See that uh, that uh, red ribbon? Well, we did. I can't really tell where the road goes. I'm not checking GPS just yet, but I'm just kind of following tire tracks. And uh, it, I, I think this is the way we came. So in just a quick moment, I'm gonna pull out the GPS. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that uh, little, these little depressions here. Um, fairly certain this is the way we came, but I see tire tracks and uh, technically not a road here, it's more of a path. But weird thing is, is if the road wasn't so rugged, rut, bleh, rutted and rugged, you could drive Provide you got a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle, something fairly narrow, all the way to that campfire, and then hike over this mountain at Tickaboo, Tickaboo Peak. So, right up there would be the actual trailhead, but the trailhead marked on Gaia that we have marked is further down here, and the truck is even further than that. Um, we got almost five miles in the clock, so I think we got about two more miles to the truck, maybe more, maybe less, probably a little more. But as long as it's like this, even ground going downhill, I think we'll be okay. Um, I just really would like to get back before dark. Okay, not only does that make this more difficult, but it's getting colder in the dark. And like I said earlier, I did, just in case, bring full extreme cold weather gear, which we may end up needing. Hopefully we won't. Coming through some of these sandy areas, I saw several sets of footprints that are fairly fresh. One obviously is mine, but the other folks that I met, there was uh, two males and two females uh, they could very well have been them, which means they came through here, and since I didn't pass them, I'm assuming they turned back. Because if they hadn't got to Tickaboo Peak by now, I'll tell you what, it's going to be dark, and I wouldn't I wouldn't go up there right now in the dark. I mean, well, I, I could. I'm not personally could, but if I was them, I wouldn't. See the footprints there? So, since we came down on the <clears throat> primary path from Tickaboo, and I did not run into them, I'm assuming they walked back to the vehicle and have left. Which means the guy that's got his um, um, tire plug kit, we won't have the luxury of using that. Fortunately, I do have a tire plug kit. It's a mountain bike kit that I'll be able to plug that flat tire with. That if we're lucky and get back to the truck, the tire will still be at 20 PSI and would have held. And if that's the case, then I'll just try to limp back to the pavement. Um, now, fortunately, I did have enough foresight to park the truck in a in a way where the uh the puncture on the tire is facing directly up in an easy to get to location so if the tire is flat we'll plug it again we'll put some more um uh, plug material in there and air out the tire and try to limp out of here and if that doesn't work we'll uh we'll put the spare tire on and if for some reason that doesn't work then uh we got about a 15 mile hike back to the road and that'll suck and that will be in the dark but keep your fingers crossed that we get out of here okay at this point in the video since this is uh live as it happens not live live but uh live as you're seeing it i can't tell you what's going to happen so i don't know so keep your fingers crossed without uh fast forwarding the video and hopefully we'll make it out of here without too much trouble all right, now worst case scenario, if we get in a survival situation, up on Tickaboo, I had a Clips bar. In my backpack, I have one pouch of freeze-dried food and um, a little bit of water left. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the Camelback bladder of mine has been leaking, so a quarter to a half hour water leaked out. However, being somebody who over prepares like I always do, I always keep one package of freeze-dried food and three bottles of water in the truck. The truck should be no more than two miles. So as long as we can get to the truck, even if we have to spend the night in the truck, I've got food and water there. And when you come out this far from civilization, you've absolutely got to be prepared. Here's that point we passed on the way out here. 
those uh, concrete, um, um, concrete, what do you call them, drainage pipes or something. It's a barbed wire fence here. And honestly, there'd probably be a good place to look around for artifacts. There could be a mine shaft, there could be the structures or something around here. Um, it's hard to say. But at this point, I'm not gonna take the scenic route. I'm gonna keep going straight to the truck to try to get there before dark because it'll get cold and dark in a hurry. And we may have a flat we gotta fix. All right, this, just check the side, the uh, GPS. This is the road, this is the main road. Um, and the actual trailhead, at least how it's marked on Gaia, is, is up that a little bit. I don't know how far it is the truck because I did not uh, drop a pin and mark it like I should have. Um, I try to think of everything, but I don't, can't think of everything, you know? So at any rate, this road is pretty well defined and will lead to the truck. So I'm confident we'll find it. Um, it probably is uh, maybe about two miles. And we've gone about six, so we're looking at about an eight mile a day. Unless that flat tire gives us trouble and we end up hoofing it out of here, then I'll bet you're off and we may spend the night out here, which I'm gonna try to avoid. Um, but if we can get that flat fixed and get out of here, we will. There's a footprint going the other way, the direction we're going. So if those folks did come up this far, they're more than likely to turn back at this point. So I'm not really expecting to see their vehicle there. And they're probably going to wonder if I made it out of here okay with a flat. So I'm assuming they'll either get back and notify the authorities that I'm out here with a possible flat. Or they left a note on my truck saying, hey, give me a call. Make sure you get out of here okay. Um, I don't know. Or they could be waiting by the truck for me. I doubt it, but you never know. But uh, either way, I'm fairly confident we'll get out of here tonight. Uh, despite having a flat tire in the truck. Um, but worst case scenario, we do have uh, have several options we can we can we can do. All right, we just hit the seven mile mark. Honestly, I thought this was going to be an easy day. Um, a mile from Tikaboo, a mile from the the trailhead to Tikaboo, and a mile back on a fairly moterate terrain. And what's turned out to be is a grueling eight mile death march because we got a minimum a mile left to get to the truck um, up some extremely rough terrain and to top it off we got a flat that hopefully I can get fixed and get out of here tonight but yeah just goes to show you mother nature is unforgiving you've got to prepare for the unexpected here's Ravine and they're still here thank goodness I wonder if they waited for me just uh, getting past this area right here. And we'll go see how they're doing. Thank goodness they got the plug kit too. All right, I just got back to the truck and I don't know if you could see it, it looked like that racing thing. That's the tire plug. And it was on 20 PSI. It looks like it's holding. And uh, these folks are gonna give me, they're gonna follow me out there to make sure I can make it. And if it starts going down, I'll stop. And he's gonna help me plug it. And if I have to change it, you can see the tire's probably almost ready to be changed. All right, when I parked it, it was about 20 PSI, and that tire's looking at about 15 PSI right now. And um, it looked like it's holding, which is good. And this is about what I expect to see. So we're gonna try to make it out of here tonight on this plug. The folks uh, that I talked about gave us a ride. They did give us a ride back from the truck, uh, which is good since we hiked damn near eight miles. And uh, if I can get all the way to the highway, which is about 15 miles, if I can get there on this plug, I will air up a little bit and I'm going to try to limp home on it. Um, but the guy's got his plug kit and uh, we agreed that if I pull over, uh, that means the tire's going down, he's gonna help me put a plug in here, a better plug, and we'll go from there. The good thing is if you're gonna plug a tire, this this uh, puncture happened at the exact perfect place to put a plug, which is right in the center of the tread. So hopefully this plug that I have in there is gonna hold. It's a mountain bike plug, but I put three or four of them in there. So I'm hoping that uh, gooey stuff will really seal up that hole and uh, we'll hold air until we get home. For the most part, the road is like this until uh, we get back to the highway, except for this one area here, Metzger Pass. That area is, uh, there's some really uh, jagged rocks we've got to get over and, and we'll have to be in four high for that. We're in four high right now. But once we get past that spot, um, it should be hopefully smooth sailing to the highway. And um, 
like I said, the guy who helped us out, he's following us to the whole, all the way to the highway. So as long as we can get to that spot um, and get to the highway without losing any significant air, I'm gonna air up and, and try and risk it and drive all the way back to Las Vegas with this plug tire. All right, it's still holding air, 14 PSI. Um, we're going through the pass right now, as you can see, uh, Medgar Pass. If we can get through this pass, it's gonna be pretty much a smooth road all the way to the highway. And uh, the folks who helped us, um, they're behind us following us just in case something happens. Um, but we're just trying to find the right way out of here and I'm pretty sure this is it. Um, it's really, really kind of a narrow road. And um, I'm in four high right now and there's some, some really hefty rocks. So I'm worried about this section with this tire. Hopefully it'll make it. So here we are on four high going over some really tough rocks. And uh, the tire's plugged. It appears to be holding air for right now, but that could change at any second. Um, our friends are right behind us, just in case something happens. He's got a plug kit, a better one than I do. And uh, we have to go put on that spare, but I'm gonna try to limp all the way back to the highway. But you can see how rough this road is. This is the rough part, this is the pass. Once you get through the pass, back on the main road, we'll be good to go. We're still navigating the narrow pass, um, 14 PSI. Tires holding, holding so far. Keep your fingers crossed that it does. Um, our friends are right behind us if something happens uh, they'll help us get it repaired uh, but so far we're just trying to get through this pass back on the smooth road and once we do i'm fairly certain hopefully we'll make it back just fine all right we made out of the pass um our friends are still behind us in the fj and uh from here on out hopefully it'll be smooth sailing we're still at holding steady at 14 PSI, so the tire does not look like it's lost air. That plug is holding. So, again, we're gonna try to make it all the way to the pavement. That's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 miles or so. And then from there, we'll air up to about 32 PSI. And then we're gonna try to limp home on the pavement, keeping close watch on this tire. Hopefully we don't get a blowout in between uh, there and Las Vegas. It's about an hour and a half drive. Okay, getting closer, I could see vehicles moving on the highway way out there in a the distance, so, um, if we have to walk, it would be a long ways, but it wouldn't be anything ungodly. So I think we can probably get to the highway at least. The only question is, will this plug hold all the way to Las Vegas? All right, so there's the highway. We did make it out of here. We limped out on that uh, tire plug and uh, thank goodness. So the tire has been inflated to 32 PSI. We've got onboard air, so we are able to fill it up. Thank God for that. Now, all we've got to do is make it back to Las Vegas an hour and a half on the highway and we're set. We can get the tire repaired. As long as we take it slow, it'll be fine. Uh, we are able to fill it up to 32 PSI, and so far it's holding. So keep your fingers crossed, we'll make it home. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, uh, subscribe. And we certainly appreciate your subscription. You're watching the videos and everything. I'm out here because you like this kind of stuff. And uh, until the next time, let's uh, see you in the next adventure because the truth is still out there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when I post a new one. All of my videos are unscripted as they happen. I can't promise they'll be exciting, but I can promise they'll be 100% real. My name is Steve from Las Vegas and these are my adventures.